John Mitchison. I'm uh, the Director of Policy and Compliance at the DMA, that's the Direct Marketing Association. So we're here at the Procter & Stevenson We Love GDPR event. I really enjoyed your presentation earlier. Could you just give us um, a sort of an overview of, of what it was you were talking about? It's kind of, uh, kind of a two-stage thing really because it's still very important to let people know um, what's uh, entailed in, in, within GDPR. So you have to tell them a little bit about the facts without trying to be too legal. But then on the other hand, I think it's very important to get across the importance um, to business and the fact that this is actually an opportunity for people. There's no way that GDPR is going to go away. Data protection was only evolving in, in one direction. Um, so you have to get behind GDPR, you've got to make those changes and if you make it part of your business process to improve things uh, and make your business more customer centric, it's going to be a very positive thing for you. So John, um, GDPR covers a, a wide aspect of topics, um, can we talk a bit about accountability? Yeah, accountability is interesting actually because um, it really doesn't get much, um, much mentioned in the actual GDPR text, but it is it's fundamental to everything about GDPR. Accountability means being able to demonstrate that you comply. It's not about complying, obviously, you know, you have to comply, it's GDPR, but the accountability bit is being able to demonstrate that you comply. So whatever you do, whatever decisions you make, you need to document these. So you need policies and procedures in place to show um, what you're doing and how you're doing it. And of course, if you make any changes further down the line, you know, if you suddenly decide to implement a new piece of software or uh, try a new marketing uh, program, you would do a data data protection impact assessment, you would uh, document why um, you chose to do it a particular way, and then you've got everything in place so that if anybody ever asked you what was happening with their data, you don't have to think about it and sort of ask around and find out what's going on. You've got it all there in, in the documents and the procedures uh, in order to you know, be able to make that demonstration. One of the key things that we've talked about today in the conference is consent. Um, can we also examine legitimate interest? Yeah, that's, that's a good topic actually, because um, before, before the GDPR text was finalised, uh, but everybody knew that it was coming in, a lot of people actually referred to it as the opt-in legislation, because everybody assumed that you know, the legislation was going to make everything just opt-in and consent only, and that was going to be the only way that you could process data or market to people. But of course, we've got the option of legitimate interest, um, partly down to the lobbying of organisations like the DMA and other, uh, other you know, bodies similar to that. Um, direct marketing is specifically picked out in Recital 47 as, as, as a way of uh, being able to use legitimate interest. So it's a business's legitimate interest to be able to market to uh, its customers. And um, it's actually a much more flexible way of uh, gaining permission from marketing um, because consent, um, consent takes a lot of effort to collect and it has to be maintained over time but of course people don't realize it's not just the sending of marketing um, that's necessary to have permission for you also need for all kinds of other things like profiling and web analytics web analytics and that kind of thing and of course that's very easy to demonstrate uh, by using legitimate interest you would use that naturally so you can use it for the marketing as well. It's, um, it's, it's, it's uh, often overlooked, but possibly the first choice that you should look at when you're talking about marketing.